hold the mic. We are your hosts. <laughs> I see you. I've been living rent free. For yeah, a week. for 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 seven days. Um, <laughs> welcome to this week's episode of Hold the Mic. We are your hosts. I'm Ryan Shed, brother. This is Ian Sherman. How are what you up, doing, though, man? What up? It's so good to see you, man. You too. It's been a long and, week. It's been yeah, a long week, <laughs> dude. You have no idea. Um, and, and just a shout out to uh, to Robbie Sherman who was on last week. If you missed last week's episode, you really should go check it out. We had we actually ended up having some really good discussions. Yeah. Uh, around a lot of a lot of things so it ended up being a great episode as it usually is when we have robbie on so a uh, big shout out to him uh, for coming on i think he's coming big back shout out to rob yeah i think he's coming back in a few weeks so so you know yeah yeah he definitely was me excited he's, uh, for that he has his calendar opening up so you say we'll lock it in and everything yep. so so um, always want to see big bro yep always good and and always good to have a a, a differing opinion and differing view on here i think because you and i tend to we really do tend to just naturally agree on a lot of things. No, man, I hate your guts. Well, I mean, you know, besides that. But <laughs> but politically, you yeah, know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, Rob you know. adds a, a whole other element. I mean, you know, he definitely, um, you know, with LGBTQ, you know, behind him. And, yep. and you know, this is a different ideology that's all there all together. And, well, he's part uh, of, he's part, he's a part of communities that you and I aren't a part of. That's you know, correct. and it's just like it's just like everything. You know, I talk about transgender stuff a lot. Right. You know, I, I still feel ignorant to to the community as a whole, but it's like I'm so glad that I've been able to personally, you know, make some friends, you know, in that community that have really opened my eyes to, you know, what it's like to live their daily life mm -hmm. and what it really is that they're looking for. You know, from from us as a society and our government. And, and I think that those are good conversations to have. And I, I hope that we're able to uh, I'm hoping I can bring some of them on the show and we can have those com well, those, love. Love, the co love conversation. And, you know, what I I hope that we can have the conversations that we have in private, because I think that there's they would be so eye opening to some folks that, that I hope they'll allow us to have it publicly. Um, so I hope I hope canceled then if that's the case. So then there we are. They want to cancel me for support of the transgender community and fucking get to it. Let's get it. Let's get it going. Because uh, we're gonna have a real you, honest conversation. You're not gonna change my my opinion of of yeah that. Um, because look, man, at the end of the day, being a bigot's being a bigot. It doesn't matter where it's coming from, and uh, you know. Just like a lot of people, I think if you're honest with yourself as you grow older and you get some self-reflection right. and, you, and you're able to self-assess that you go, damn, I really said some things that probably hurt some people, you know, around me that I didn't intend to, you know, it's just, you say things out of ignorance. There's a difference. And that's another thing. There's a difference between saying something out of ignorance and saying something out of malice. Right. If you know something and you're saying it to purposely hurt someone or to purposely attack a community, you're saying it with malice. If you're saying it out of ignorance, just because you don't know, that's different. You know, I can fix ignorance, but you can't fix somebody being a malicious piece of garbage. So, no, I mean, people who are malicious and you, you know where it comes from a very self-centered and, and angry place. And yes. some of it makes me question if that's like they're fighting something internally. You know, because there's an attraction and then they don't like that there's an attraction and therefore they have to to have this pendulum swing of, of to be nasty and and verbalize that yep. anger because it's something inside that they need to work on. You know, uh, you I think know, that about a lot of people who have a lot of hate coming out. Even me, you know, there I think there was a lot of hate at one point coming out of me because, you know, going back to my mental health, you know, when you're not diagnosed and you're not you're not getting the care you need. You know, you you lash out in ways you probably wouldn't normally, mm -hmm. you know, so it's kind of like that. You know, you just kind of you, you hurt people's feelings and you say things that, you know, you probably don't even know are freaking true. And, right. and uh, so that's what I mean. Through my my journey over since 2018, I have learned a lot of myself. And like I said, the self-reflection is painful sometimes because, like I said, it's. I think back and I think, you know, I can think of three or four people right now off the top of my head. I, I wish I could reach out to today and just be like, you know, I know I said some shit that I really wish I hadn't said to you, you know, and, and it's just like, I know I can't take it back, but I can't apologize, you know? And, um, so that's a big man of you. Yeah. I say, fuck them. <laughs> <laughs> <So. laughs> 
it got you over that bridge. Here you no, are. Today. You're a better you man know, because of that experience. And that's, so a couple of them back. deserved it, but you know, for for the most part, mo most of them didn't. So well, I, I'm um, glad there's there's a self reflection. Speaking of uh, yes. losing your shit, how is Coach Dad doing? <laughs> Because <laughs> I'm I'm looking at you as a uh, Coach Bombay. So how is these uh, badass uh, kids? I would say I'm much more Roy Kent from Ted Lasso okay. than okay. than uh, Bombay from The Mighty Ducks. Okay, uh, yeah, I caught that reference. Thank you. Um, <laughs> but no, uh, it's been very eye opening. I I'm actually enjoying it. You know, learning a lot. It For those of you who don't know, I follow a lot of sports. I'm actually a pretty big sports fan. I love racing. I love football. I love basketball. I love I love baseball. Baseball is probably I'm um, lower of my scale, but um, there's one sport that I don't know much about, and that's soccer slash football. And um, so I've definitely been learning. I, the The guy that runs the whole thing in Tucson, his name is James. He was great. He came uh, last night before my practice yeah. and just ran me through some things that he does you know, during practices to keep the kids engaged. Cause the first couple games or, or the first couple practices, I felt like I was corralling cats for, for like half the time. And this <laughs> week, th this week was better. I, I was able to, you know, keep them all engaged, keep them all in drills. And, um, one of the other dads stepped up to help me, you know, as much as he can during the practices and stuff. So that's great. Nice. Um, I know all the kids' names already, so that's that's good. I was afraid I was going to be like you, you, you over there, you, you. <laughs> but I already got their names learned, and um, it's been fun watching Dominic. Okay. Um, it, it's been inter interesting because the kids didn't even realize he was my son until last night. Stop. So, no, they didn't. So they're just like, wait, like real dad? Yeah, like <laughs> well, well, just because. <laughs> When, My mom was still the babysitter of all of us, especially Rob. That's Believe funny. Me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but no, it was more, you know, when we got there, he was just out in the field, you know, kicking the ball and whatever. So he wasn't really coming up to me. And before we started all this, I said, look, you know, I'm going to have to pay attention to all the other kids, right. you know, so I can't, I can't be focused just on you. You tell and him so, you call me coach. Don't call me dad. You call me coach. I didn't tell him that, you know, he, he, he can call me whatever he wants, but it, I just told him, I said, you just don't get upset you know, because I'm, I have to pay attention to everybody, yeah. you know, and he's done really good with that. So good that, like I said, most kids didn't even realize he was my son. Well, during those water breaks, he's calling you motherfucker. So that's what it's about to be. Oh well, yeah. I'm telling you when I, so last <laughs> like, night it was like, a, it was, it was 102, uh, Stop. still, at, still at six o'clock last night. So when we got there, the first thing the kids started saying was, are, are we going to have to run suicides today? And I was like, of course we're going to have to run suicides today. And then I looked at my watch and I saw the temperature and I was like, you know what? We're not going to run suicides today. <laughs> yeah, we're going to walk though. We're yeah, gonna we're going to. I was like, instead, we're going to jog and you're going to dribble the ball all around the, the center of the field. There you go. There we go. There we go. Um, Adaptable. I love it, so, man. I love yeah, it. Yeah, first game's tomorrow. Oh. And um, it's going to be 107. Stop. And, yeah, and they haven't canceled either. They just sent out an email like, we're still going to play. They're like, the competitive teams have all, all canceled the afternoon games. And of course, our game is at 1145. So we're we're like the second to last eight uh, uh, time slot. So it's like right about noon is going to be when it starts getting like 104, 105. It right, starts it SPF. starts climbing quick. Well, I've got Ice thankfully pack. I've got a tent from one of those you know uh, tents that you see at the fairs and stuff from when I was okay. campaigning. So that should be big enough, I think, for most of the kids to at least sit under and shade. You okay. know, when they're not out on the field. And then, of course, you know, uh, you know, we'll have cooler with waters and Gatorades and yeah, yeah, keeping them hydrated. It'll be. And uh, if there's any trolls here, if you guys could send a pizza to what's the uh, what's the address? <laughs> we want to feed these kids. So I don't please, need to make it easier. <laughs> please send the pizzas to these children. All right, troll uh, one uh, and feed children. There you go. That's there you funny. Go. <laughs> here we are. Here we are, man. Here at hold the mic. Speaking of trolling, I uh, let I want to move on and troll Donald Trump a little bit today. Uh oh. Can, uh -oh. We, can we can we do that? <laughs> hit him with the mic. Hit him. Hit him. <laughs> um, <laughs> thank you, Rochelle. I appreciate it. I, um, oh, we got Angry Bunny here. Thank you, Angry Bunny, for uh, for promoting us. Everybody's dope. Uh, I, I reshared yeah. it. Hey, Big Brother, I see you out there. Peg, thank you, everybody. Hey, Brian, sorry we were late. That was on me. Sorry. Sorry, we got the whole squad here, man. It's good to see everybody. We got everybody. You know, thank you so much. And, and again, you know, we're adding new countries every month to the podcast download. 
uh, what is it? Sa- I think it's Centerville, Tennessee. We have like 120 downloads in that one city. So mm. wh- whoever our fans are in Centerville, Tennessee, uh, we love you. <laughs> hey, and shout out to Timothy Smith, man. First time live. That's what's oh, up. Oh, nice. Welcome, man. Welcome to the show. So seriously, thank you everybody for for downloading and telling your friends about us and and everything. We're in 321 cities now, and uh, I think we're still sitting at 24 countries. So uh, that's in 33 episodes. I think that's pretty freaking good, personally. We're having, we're doing we're doing okay. I think we we're doing, doing okay. okay. I think we're doing okay. You know who's not doing okay though? Donald freaking Trump. That's who's not Ooh. doing good. So a little breaking news that came out today: uh, Judge uh, Shutkin. Gives Chutkin, Trump, Chutkin, Judge is Chutkin. it Chutkin? I'm sorry, Chutkin. Judge Chutkin. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Gives Trump lawyers two deadlines to object to Jack Smith's redactions: <clears throat> October 1st to object to the motion, and then October 10th to object to the motion's attachments. Um, so we could see at least Ever some done. of the, some of the actual evidence of Ever Trump's done. crimes before the election. And what did we we talked about this in prior shows? I said, yeah. here we go. It's going to come out, and it's not going to be a case. It's just going to be information that we all want to know. And we all want confirmed. Sitting. Correct. Yeah. There's no. Yeah. There's no walking. And, and around. no, I'm sure there's going to be new information too. But I want stuff confirmed. I, I oh. want to know, like, yeah, that's true. Yep, that's that's accurate. You know, I, I watched I watched a documentary, Stop the Steal, on uh, Max. And this is not a plug. We don't work with Max. Um, but Ryan, I really thought of you. I yeah. was like, they're really putting out the skinny they're 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 spilling the tea all these republicans in this documentary it yeah. was good I, I tell everybody to check it out especially if you're like oh what was january 6 and what was what was the whole lead up not what was even the just name that of, day what was the stop name of the steal is the oh yeah, yeah 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 and it's the lead up it's literally from election into january 20th it's like wow like that really went down or you know i should say january 6th um, but the, like the with the spillover after how it's it went wild. down, yeah, yeah. How it went down, the people behind the scenes who was talking, the governors, people in Arizona that you would probably know the names of. Yeah, it's, the eleven. It was um, they're 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 in court right now. Like the fraudulent yeah. electors. Yeah, yep. yeah. There's eleven yep. of them. Uh, shout out to uh, Kelly Ward. Uh, I know you blocked me on Twitter, but I'm still out here coming still after in you. Street. Still out in these streets. <laughs> you and your husband. Yo, man. Hopefully they're going to put you all in in opposing cells. Oh, my God. (laughs) Y'all can just stare at each other. Speaking of, man, I didn't realize that Diddy, literally, (laughs) like I said to you, is down the street. And Crypto Boy is over there, too. The one that... um, Bro. Oh, they're they're sharing the same VIP cells. Let me tell you. These Diddy memes. These Diddy... The the baby oil... Dude, the baby (laughs) oil videos on TikTok. (laughs) If if you haven't gone down that rabbit hole, first off, let me just warn you. (laughs) Yeah. I R.I.P. Baby oil sales. Is all I you, gotta had, say, all right? you had like a 75 year old, like old man's wheeze right there. <laughs> and, and, and I'm like this kid from Malcolm in the Go Middle. Okay, that. you're Nailer. lucky you're not just like leaning in on this. Oh, my God. Like, <gasps> um, yeah, no, the baby oil videos have been priceless. You will. So the warning is if you go down that rabbit hole, you're probably going to be there for about four to six hours. So just plan accordingly. Bring Ryan snacks. Plan your yeah. Plan your bathroom breaks. Um, it, you're going to be there for a while. <laughs> Tell the fans. Uh, you know, I mean, That's we shouldn't be late. laughing about this because this dude, this dude is left behind uh, a, a pretty long list of victims. It looks Please like. Please read what Angry Bunny just posted. What did Angry Bunny just post? Diddy the diddler did it. <laughs> That's going to be that's going to be like a language coach is new thing like uh I want here's what I want you to say before you go out on stage. Diddy the diddler did it. <laughs> now repeat that 10 times. <laughs> speech impediment gone. You know what? Biden should start doing that it. Cured yeah, that cured my stutter. Yeah, that cured my stutter. Oh my oh god. My god. So, so um yeah, I don't I don't know, man. Well, this my, is this My is, gut this tells me that this is going to be bad for Trump. Yeah. My gut tells me that, but history <laughs> tells me that he's probably going to get away with this somehow. His his uh, well, no, because this is this is the judge that's not playing that game, and this is the judge who is right now has to. It's not the judge I'm worried about. No, no, but this is what I mean. This is the judge that has to decide what the immunity is. Yeah. So this is the one that brought the whole idea of the immunity case, not meaning that that she did. No, Judge Shutkin said, I need clarity on this. And this is what the Supreme Court then passed, of course, uh, down. But um, it's now on her 
to decide what is immunity versus what is the the breaking the law. Yeah. And and so she's she needs to clarify some of these things. So some of these motions and Jack Smith has been lining up just just lining them up. Just just really. And I want to them in. And I'm going to say something that I've said a few times, but I think I need to say it more often. I think it is very important to remember that Jack Smith and these other prosecutors um uh, you know, uh, was it Fonnie Willis? Who else am I am I missing? Uh, but, you have uh, uh, James Letitia James here. Letitia in New York. James, thank you. Yeah. So these these people would not have put their entire careers on the line to go after this man and set a precedent that has not been set before. They would not have done it if they didn't think they could. They had the goods on this guy. I really firmly believe that. Like these these are not stupid people. And you'd have to be one stupid mofo to to step to the plate to go after a former president and not have the goods. Like you'd have to be stupid. So I I just I don't I don't I'm think I'm really I, hoping the Rico case in Georgia does actually get picked up um and back on track. Mm. Um the DC one looks the most solid when it comes to like information coming out before the election. Clearly it's the last one that's standing. Yeah. After the election you'll have back here in New York with uh, uh Marshawn um passing judgment whatever that is, which I do heavily believe is going to be some type of house arrest or something because there's only one it only makes sense that it would be something that he would feel would would become an issue before the election. Right. Yeah. If if he's taking away any rights for this man to travel, of course, there's going to be voter fraud, blah, 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 interference, this and that. And, you know, they're going to cry uh, foul play left and right. I mean, they're crying foul play about his sexual assault. Yeah. It's just like these, these people are gross in, in, in all ways, all capacities. Um, they just want to play the victim. Yep. And with this, with Judge um, um, Chutkin, it, it, it's interesting to me because she's of Jamaican descent. I believe she's actually is Jamaican. Like she moved here and got her, her, uh, had her humble beginnings and did her thing. Really? I wouldn't be surprised if that's why this man is attacking Haitians, not knowing the difference between the two and, uh, and why he's doing what he's doing in, uh, um, Springfield. You know, it's just it, the sheer level of his ignorance and also how low he's willing to go and happily go. I wouldn't be surprised if that's where some of these attacks really are stemming from, because this judge is not giving him an inch. She's not playing around. Yeah, I'm trying to look up her Wikipedia right now. But it's, it's, it's quite telling to see born how is an American lawyer and juror serving as early life was born in Jamaica. She was born in Kingston, Jamaica. There it is. Yep. Yeah. But, you know, if we're talking about Donald Trump here, you know, all black as uh, shithole countries. So this it is. What when it did is. she move to the states? Father. And so she can't be bought like uh, Eileen Cannon from where she came from. Yeah. But you know this is where we're at. So we got those two dates. So something very serious. So by uh, yeah. by October second, we will have an answer for the first motion, and then October eleventh. We will have the second redacted and, uh, or at least an answer to will they, won't they? So we'll we'll have yeah. some more information uh, coming up real soon, guys, real soon. And uh, Kamala is really taking a lead in some of the polls, which polls don't vote. We understand how that is. Yeah, but it's really getting underneath his skin. I know they're is- trying. They're they're trying to counter it with some pretty ridiculous stuff. Um, so my brother said, "Do you think they will have?" Uh, a Halloween costume of Diddy. <laughs> yeah, they do, don't they? They shit, I just saw one of Mayor Eric Adams. <laughs> like what are they gonna do? Carrying around like a big thing of baby oil? Like all you need to trick one or person, treat. One person like, has to show up the... baby oil and one person just needs to show up in any type of uh, shiny moon moon suit Diddy back in the nineties. Oh, you know, look, geez. that's it. That's all you take need. Take that, take that, take or that. Or just do the white party and you already know what you're doing. Mm. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yep. The ideas are there. Yeah, yeah. Oh, man. Well, baby oil definitely has to be one of them. I don't know. Anybody that has a bed, you know, like the entire size of their backyard, I think that's a huge red flag. <laughs> that's like a huge red flag. <laughs> like, can you imagine walking in that dude's backyard and you just see, a, like, he's got his arm around you and you just see a big, white, fluffy bed and that's the entire backyard? Like, tell me your butthole wouldn't pucker up. All I'm saying is 
there's a couple people who are real quiet that used to be in his inner circle, and only the, time will tell. And the people that are deleting like decades worth of social media posts. Oh yes, oh yes. Everybody is is looking back at their their resume like it's like I at that party. I, yeah, it's like, a lot of people. I'm not guilty. Yo, and I'm yeah. thinking about J Lo now. I'm just like, mm, he's the only one who said you were the best one. So crazy loves that, crazy. Uh, look, man. We'll look, there. Ha- Fuck, I'm gonna say it. There has to be something wrong with her. There has to be something wrong with her. <laughs> you just took a second to say. I'm gonna say it. I'm gonna go I'm, ahead and say it. Yeah, just you I'm know. Sometimes you just gotta make sure is it worth something it. Something <laughs> wrong with her. I mean, okay, yeah, sure, sure. Dude, this industry like, is wild, d- man. Dudes, I mean, uh, yeah, but I'm just talking like she's she's a beautiful woman. She's accomplished. Like she seems pretty intelligent. Like it's like Holly Berry. Yeah, well, well, Holly Berry is different. Um, I won't put that those two in the same boat, but I will say that the industry made J Lo because J Lo can't really sing. But you know, the oh, industry God, no. helped with technology, everything. I mean, she could dance. She's been a dancer. She was a fly girl. If you look back at uh, her original humble beginnings with um, uh, in, in Living, Living Color. Color, you know, so like she she's done her thing. There's nothing to take away from that. And she's extremely hardworking, and that's the thing with the music industry. They will create you, or you say you used to. You know, they don't really have the. It's artist a little development. harder now. Yeah. It doesn't exist. It's non-existent, and they're and they're collapsing left and right because of uh, the streaming wars and people trying to figure out what's you know what's what. Um, yeah. Even you, we, you and I have talked. You know, Twitter, Twitter doesn't pay artists for their music, and yeah. so there's this huge lawsuit that's taking place against Elon and. And what's going on there for the copyright infringement? So okay. you know, it's 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 the wild west that's kind of happening. Yeah, <clears throat> in this you know, industry. It, but it, for J Lo, I don't know, man. There's there's something there. Yeah, I mean, but yeah. I I definitely think she's in deeper than than uh, than most. Yeah, I would think so. Um, like you said, it's it's too many things have come out to support a, a lot of the stories that we've heard. Right. You know, and the the like the movies that people make on, you know, the celebrity cults and all that stuff. That that stuff wasn't just made up. Like and, people and, people were exposed to this <clears throat> scene and right. ended up writing, you know, manuscripts and books about it. They're like and, and it's a freaking mind, cult. He, Diddy talks about J-Lo, like Trump talks about Maxine uh uh is it Gal- Galen Maxwell? What's her name? Uh Gian Maxwell? Yes. Ghislaine. Think about that. Like the way Diddy talks about J Lo is the same way that Trump, like how it's like, wish her the best, and yeah, like, yeah, right. Yeah. So something's there. Yeah, I mean, you know, look, I'm I'm gonna say the same thing I said with with Epstein though. Not every single person that took a picture with this dude was part of the nasty crap that he did. You know, like we have to be somewhat fair. Like just because somebody had a picture with him doesn't mean it. Right. You know, and I say that as somebody who frequently posts the photo of Elon Musk and Ghislaine Maxwell right, <laughs> making right, that right. connection. But right. but still, you you really do have to, you know, unless you have some proof, a photo with somebody does not necessarily tie you to their evil deeds. Now, if you have 20, 30, 50 photos and videos and all that stuff, you know, and you were like best friends and all that kind of stuff, then, yeah, that's a little different. I'm There's, not going to say what I'm thinking. No, say it. I can't be the only one getting in trouble on here. Shit. I was going to say, if there's a video of, of J-Lo, please let it leak. Oh. <laughs> just saying. Just saying. Take oh, that. Oh, good that. Lord. Take that. Take, take that. that. Oh, God. <laughs> so let me go ahead and get canceled. Thank you, guys. It's, it's been the a fun baby oil song. <laughs> Watch me put it on. <laughs> I just... Oh my god! <laughs> I'm trying to get in trouble today. Apparently. Yeah, we're gonna get canceled before the end of this show. All right. Um, yeah. So before we move on from Trump, I think we Trump need Trump or to... the diddler. I don't even know anymore. Yeah, I know. <laughs> like Joe Biden. Yeah. <laughs> I need a handler. Fuck you for that joke. That was that was uncalled for. <laughs> Where's Angry Bunny? I need you to direct me. Where do I need to go with my life? Where, she's where laughing. I... So clearly, she's just enabling you. <laughs> They're all enabling you in the comment sections. Yes, they are. I feel um, seen. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Thank you. So um, Trump is now selling a crypto coin 
that uh, is getting launched, which is, of course, just another pump and dump uh, scheme. This is major, man. This is major. Like, let me, before we go down this even further, I just want to say, if you are somebody who still supports Trump and you are buying this man's bullshit, you deserve everything coming. Like... It's, you know, it's a match made in heaven. Stupid love, stupid, man. I, it's, it just is what it like, is. If you're going to keep falling for it. Yeah, that, and that's the thing. People keep falling for it. So, of course, he keeps doing it. These people wouldn't be doing this if they weren't making money off of it. Well, no, well keep in mind who's making money. It's only his family that's doing business with him. Mm-hmm. You know, so RNC. You think, you think a lot of people have learned? I, th- I think people are not following his... Let me say this. The people who are investors, they're not getting in bed with him. You know, it's it's the yeah, people they know, who are most of them know better by the now. People who are dropping coins, you know, who are like, I want to support my president. But the, the bigger thing that I'm thinking about is the the foreign entities who are putting money into these, you know, industries of his because they want favors. And this is the legal way to do it. Yeah. They're buying, you know, stock or whatever his company was. They're buying the uh, uh, the coin, which is going to be completely unchecked. You know what I mean? It's not there's only so much um, uh, that federal government can actually get involved, which uh, I sent you some information about it. But Coinbase is sit- literally sitting here as a free promotion for Trump because he's pro crypto. And it's like it was really interesting to just see this this uh, this movement within crypto where they're like, you know, this guy's for us, but she's not. She hasn't had a, a strong stance. So who do we want? We want him. Less regulation. It's like, but we just had literally this massive fraud with the crypto boy where he was taking everybody's money and then he was putting it into something else that he had no business doing. But granted, he made so much money off that to put that money back. It just, it, it just, it didn't cross over at the right time. And it was just a legal move, yeah. you know? And so, and then they just uh, got his girlfriend, um, ex-girlfriend for two years. And it's just like, what is going on? And that was Sam Bankman Freed. And yeah. it's like, what is, you know, what is going on here where, um, you know, it's it, again, the Wild West. It's like, this is something that's so new and alien to everybody. And this is just Bitcoin or a, a blockchain technology with crypto versus what it could do with information. So it's leaps and bounds. And our government don't know anything about it. All these people who are over the hill. Chuck Grassley is not, he's not going to be telling you anything about blockchain. I'm telling you right now. Nor is Mitch McConnell. Oh, Kamala Harris is down at the border right now. So um, the the best one for me so far, though, I, I don't know about you, but Trump is selling watches. <laughs> First off, his wife went on TV talking about people can't afford groceries, this, then the third. And then four hours later, he launched this this new enterprise. This travesty. One hundred thousand dollars for a gold watch. You know, so the quality of now, this gold watch. Five years from now, when you see people with green wrists, we'll know which idiot bought this shit. OK, I'm telling you right now. That reminds me. So this this happened. I don't remember when it was, but it was whenever Charlie Sheen was still making the rounds. And uh, I, I, yeah, I don't think it says the year. So this was uh, Charlie Sheen on the Graham Norton show talking about his interaction uh, with Donald Trump and the quality products that he likes to to give folks. Now, I have to say, I, a slightly surprised that Piers Morgan's doing it because he, I don't know if you know, he's a big Donald Trump supporter. And I know you're not a fan. I'm really not. I'm really not. No, I am, I am reminded of a time um, about... Five years ago, I was at a dinner with my ex-wife, Brooke, and her family, and this and that. And about halfway through, I, 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 I noticed um, Donald um, staring at my watch. And so he started saying, you know, listen, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry that I wasn't invited to your wedding, this and that. Or, I'm sorry I can't make your wedding. And I'm like, I didn't invite you. Um, <laughs> so, so he says, but, you know, I want to give you a, uh, an early wedding gift uh, as a gesture from me and Melania. And she doesn't say a word. She's very sweet and very pretty, but just kind of sits there, you know? Yeah. Uh, anywho, so, uh, 
So he says, uh, these, are, uh, these are platinum diamond Harry Winston. Uh, and he pulls off his cufflinks. And he gives them to me. And so I'm like, oh, gosh, uh, Mr. Trump, you, you really shouldn't do this. He goes, no, no, it's, it's the least I can do. And, you know, have a great marriage and all that. Little did he know. Um, <laughs> so, so, so smash cut to about six months later, I had a, uh, some jewelry getting appraised at the house, you know. And, and, and she finished and was leaving. And, and I said, oh, yeah, you know, there's, there, there, there's another uh, couple of pieces that I have that I'm, that I'm very curious about. Could, would you mind appraising these? She said, no, uh, what are they? I said, well, you know, I explained the dinner and this and that. And these are from Donald Trump, Harry Winston, you know, flawless D's, platinum. She, she took the loop, uh, spent about four seconds, and, and kind of recoiled from it, uh, much like people do from Trump. And, um, <laughs> and so, so she says, uh, in, in, in their finest moment, this is cheap pewter and, and, and bad zirconias. <laughs> and they're stamped Trump. And I just thought, I just thought, what does this really say about the man, you know? Um, that he said, here's like a great wedding gift, and it's just, it's just a bag of dog shit, you know? <laughs> that, doesn't that just that say it all? Every single thing that he's come up with. Like Everything. every hat, every shirt, every, you know what? You know How? what you'll never, you know what you'll never see on a Donald Trump merch? I'm going to show you. I got my, my Kamala shirt, and right here, right there, that's a union bug. You hear me talk about these things. Mm. You see them on almost every single piece of campaign propaganda, t-shirts, bags, it doesn't matter. Democrats use union print shops and support high-paying jobs mm. in everything that they do even if it's uh, with printing their campaign stuff. That's why you see three times as many Trump signs, because when you get them printed in China, they're a hell of a lot cheaper. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know, man. I saw a lot of uh, Harris. A lot of Harris. I'm seeing a lot of Harris signs too, oh, yeah. you know, but, but it, it, it's definitely, you're seeing a lot more Harris signs than you saw Biden signs. You know, even, even in 2020. I'm seeing a lot more American flags than I'm seeing anything. Because I, I think for the first time, like I like we said, you know, a month or two ago, for the first time, people are actually excited about yeah. voting for somebody. You know, right. right? We can all sit here. You know, do I think Biden had a good presidency in terms of things that he got passed and and the recovery that he had to do? Yeah, I think he had a. I think he had a good presidency. Um, was I, I excited? Him at him. Was I excited? to fucking vote for him in 2020? Not really. Yeah. And I'm not going to sit here and lie, you know, but I, but if you're putting him up against Donald Trump, that was a no brainer. Right. You know, like, yeah. Burnt toast look better. Than yeah. I, you know, I'd, like I said, I'd, I'd put a chair, you know, in office before Donald Trump. But, um, this time we're seeing, we're seeing what we saw in 2008, 2007, 2008. Yeah. We're seeing the same level of, excitement of oh okay we really are about to turn this page and we're about to put our first female president in the white house it's year of the woman it really is year of the woman and, and, the and it's about are high and it, it's them for time. the fight it's them for the fight and that's that's the biggest thing i i've i have literally thought about that it only took this to bring the country together because it's been men tearing it apart since day one and, and the the thing that made me truly a believer was during the debate mm. and I knew that I wasn't going to walk away from the debate feeling very different than I already did. But, you know, but of course you, you try to go into it with an open mind and say, right. you know, hell who knows Donald Trump could come up with five points that make me go, Oh shit. Of course it never happened. Um, <laughs> but when I watched Kamala Harris and how she handled that man for the whole, you know, what was it? 90 minutes or 60 yeah, minutes, whatever 90, it was. 90 minutes. Yep. The whole, the whole time, she did not raise her voice. She did not lose her shit, even when he tried to talk about her family. And all of her responses were measured, and all of her jabs were well placed. And she didn't over, she didn't overproduce 
on on you know hitting him with the personal shit she kept it back to we need to turn the page and these are the things that we need to focus on and these are things that i will focus on and oh by the way here's a few plans for you in case you actually care about things like that but those little landmines at the end you know just showed you the preparation you know she 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 was prepped and you know what and the funny thing was if you go back and watch us streaming that yeah, you remember she was nervous at the beginning when you when you when she came out. Yeah, and you know, and I and instantly I thought of uh, one of my favorite documentaries has been um, uh, the Redemption Team. Uh, if you've never watched, it's on Netflix. Mm. It's about the 2008 Olympics uh, basketball team, and yep. in there, you know, Chris Chris Bosch said, uh, you know, he talks about how nervous he was, and he's like, you can't. He's like, you can't control how your body responds in those situations. Yeah. You know, it just, you just have to deal with it. And that's kind of what I was watching with her. She came out, you could tell her mouth was dry, yes. you know, like, like, and, and anybody that's been in those type of speaking situations, like, you know, exactly what that feels like. And it's horrible. Your mouth dries up. You feel like you're not going to be able to talk. Your tongue is making weird noises. Like, and then you get even more nervous because you know your mouth is dry and that yeah. the mic is picking that up I and that, yeah, you know, and it was just like, but once she settled in, you know, it was like maybe the first three to five minutes after that, she, she was, locked in. she was golden. And it was, it was the, t- the conversation about uh, abortion that she was like, now's my time. Yes. And she stepped in and she's like, I'm ready to fight. I'm yep. ready to fight. It and almost felt like, it almost felt like, okay, that's what I'm prepped for. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Now we're getting into what I'm prepped for. And she was ready to box. It was a rope of dope. And and the best part for me was one of the best parts I should say was the aftermath because beforehand Donald Trump was saying that you know he's debated, you know, done seven debates and he's the master of that and everybody was laughing on the right I should say. Mm-hmm. You know, they were criticizing Kamala because she had spent a week I guess prepping yeah. for for the debate. Yep. And then she shows up just completely annihilates him they act surprised and then they start crying about she cheated no she didn't cheat it's called preparing like none of those questions that were asked like made anybody in america go "Ooh, you know good question hadn't thought of that we all saw those questions coming you from think a she mile has away cheat codes Is it- yeah. <laughs> i could have answered those questions but let this be let this be a warning if they're going to act like this for a debate, what are they going to do when they lose the election? And we all know what the answer is. Yep. So just this is who we're dealing with. And there's, there's no point in arguing with this. You lost. No. Your boy didn't read the book report on America. And this is what it is. Like Ever. he couldn't give a presentation. And he looked like it. He looked like a fool. He literally started talking about something that was debunked. And the best part is that they complained. Why did they fact check him so much, but not her? Well, let's look at that. He told more lies. She maybe did tell a lie or two, and they said something, and therefore, there's the calculation. More lies from Trump, more fact checking. Yep. Statistics. It's all there. See, and Juan Juan had similar thing. So my first day as a radio DJ, I did that whole dry mouth dribble, and then I was good the next break. I still do it on the podcast when we have when we have guests. I get nervous for the guests. With you, I'm good now, like because I know we're good and just like if I'm off, you're gonna be there to pick me up, that kind of stuff. But anytime we have a uh, prime example, we have our sponsor. Uh, <laughs> we have our sponsor, which is uh, Mod Atlas and Justice AI, and the man behind it, Christian Ortiz. We were supposed yeah. to we were supposed to record a very good, you know, uh, thirty minute episode of what he's doing for you all. And still are. Yeah, still we still are. will. We're still gonna do it, but. We went to go do it, and everything that could go wrong with the software did, and we weren't able to do it. So, um, you know, shout out to Christian Ortiz, one of yeah, our sponsors, and uh, Justice AI. Go look it up. Um, it's pretty I, dope. I, re- it's pretty I really dope. do look forward to doing this episode with, for you guys yeah. because it's, um, you know, it's touching on uh, AI, which you know, I I feel safe in saying I'm pretty ignorant on. It's um, here, man. It is here. It, oh, it's definitely here, and I see that now. So it's kind of like I feel like that old man, like my dad, saying, "Show me how to use the flip phone again." Like mm-hmm. I, I feel like I'm reaching that era of my of my life. Hey, Dom. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's it's gonna be live, Dad. It's like this. I already see it. Liv's like, I don't have time for you. Okay, D- bro. I'm That's getting exact. out my hoverbike. Are you done? Like she's yeah. gonna be like, uh, do you got it yet? I have I have my Genshin Impact to get back to. 
I'll um, be on my jetpack. Deuces. Like, pretty much, right. man. Well, Jeff, um, yeah. The Good funny idea. thing is, we have a, we have an Oculus, and I don't think she likes like the flying and stuff. Mm. In the, man, it does. It feels a little crazy. Like I was, I got the roller coaster one, and I had to sit down while I'm like, because it makes you good. feel like yeah, yeah, your yeah. stomach actually goes up, like you're actually doing it. It's oh, crazy. God. Oh god. So, anyway, uh, um, so I just, I just thought that Charlie Sheen tie in to everything that he's trying to sell because this next, dude man. is great. A hundred thousand dollar <laughs> watch. He's got uh, what is it? Ten thousand dollar gold shoes. Uh, he's got a uh, uh, he's selling silver coins that you know are just three rifting. times. Just yeah, rifting. He's charging three times what the actual silver is worth. Uh, like oh, the, and the NFTs, crypto, the crypto, crypto, the crypto. I think is is a funneling. I think that they're funneling money I mean, and exactly. and washing it. Yeah, yeah. And speaking of criminals who are funneling. Speaking money. of criminals who are funneling money, <laughs> let's talk about the New York City Mayor Eric Adams, shall we? Got him. Hey, that was a good that was that was a good transition, sir. That I like that. Very good transition. I like that. We've All been right. working on our segues on our off time. Well, I think ready. since um, uh, let me read this, and then I want to hear from you as an actual New Yorker. Yeah. Um, how you feel? But um, for those who may not <clears throat> have have heard, uh, the current New York City Mayor Eric Adams uh, was handed a federal indictment charging him with five counts of bribery wire fraud, conspiracy, and two counts of soliciting campaign contributions from foreign nationals. It was a 57-page mm-hmm. indictment. So apparently this was between 2016 and October of 2023. He allegedly committed 23 different overt acts, which include accepting free flights and hotel rooms and coordinating straw donations. Adams allegedly accepted over $123,000 worth of luxury travel benefits between 2016 and 2021 without disclosing any of it. And I just want to remind everybody, too, before before Ian talks on this, is that this is also a former police officer. Just just keep that in mind as we're talking about all this, that this oh, is yeah. this is a former police officer that was elected mayor. Oh, so. yeah. Yep. So and he ran and he ran on being a cop. He ran yes, on like he, very I'm a heavily, cop. very heavily. He said, I'm with the cops. He goes, I'm all about cleaning up the streets. I am with you. I am blue collared. It was a lot of things that were built around um, being on the side of of justice a lot. Do you remember when he was on the, the subway and he called in somebody being assaulted down on the ground? Do you remember that during his campaign? Yes. Yeah. Or, or no, yeah. it was I think it was his first day of work. Yeah. And I remember everybody in the comments being like, aren't you a former crop? Go down there and fu- do something. Yeah. Like, yeah. The thing the so I didn't vote for him first and foremost, he was not, he was not, I, mean, I wasn't going to ask. No. I, and I'm happy to give that answer. Uh, either way. Uh, I voted for uh, Maya uh, Wiley. I thought she was amazing. I thought she'd be dope. Um, I thought, you know, again, bringing in something different to this city. Um, even though blue Bloomberg looking back, did a great job on, on holding it down here. Just because New York is so forward thinking, yeah. um, culturally everything like you're not banning. He wasn't a hor- He wasn't a horrible mayor. He wasn't a horrible mayor. He he did he he was he was moderate more than Republican, but he was a Republican at the time. Um, but he ran for as a Democrat, yeah. right? So you know, there's always that blurred line. Um, but the city was getting back in order. I mean, the the, the biggest issue we had was stop and frisk in the city, um, which uh, I have not had to deal with because it was very targeted very targeted and if you pass you were walking right by it um but uh but this 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 man running for cop being a cop uh in america in in new york uh with the brightest lights uh this is this is a main hub for being a mayor like this is not mayor pete in indiana this is new york city new york and, city is uh, a stepping stone to the presidency very it easily. really is it really is and uh and the thing that's interesting about this with him is that you know he's he reminded me a lot of Kwame Kilpatrick in Detroit. Oh God, yeah. Minus the flashy bling earrings and and every, it was it was the suits, uh, the the way he held himself, uh, the way that he tried to campaign, the way he tried to connect himself with certain uh, young people, and uh, I was just like, I've seen this playbook before, yeah. where you're trying to do a lot of it in the clubs and you're trying to make yourself a part of that scene, and one of the biggest things about him is that he started hiring his brother and close family members and people almost like a goon squad and putting them in, in strategic places throughout his administration. And I was like, why is your brother like the head of security? Like what's going on here? You know, yeah. hasn't been a cop in forever. There's just a lot of gray areas. 
But um, there were a man, lot of red flags right off the bat. A lot. There really flags. were. And and just a lot of things where he just he seemed like he was for bought like he was just he was he was up for grabs for the one percent. He looked like he was just up to be grabbed. Like, yeah. however, you can you can buy his uh, access. Yep. And uh, and this is a perfect example. But same thing goes with Bob Mendez uh, in Jersey with getting the gold bars. Yeah. You know, from Egypt. So it's yep. like you, you're seeing this influence fluct, uh, fluctuate into the in, uh, into the politics. The difference is that Democrats hold them accountable. How yes. much do you think this is happening on the other side? They're just like letting it slide by. You know what oh, I mean? Oh, it's not. Uh, matter of fact, uh, man, um, Tommy Laren, she tweeted something out saying that the Democrats, uh, the system is going after their own or something like that, implying Democrats are going out. I'm like, that's how it's supposed to work, you clown. Like the, the, Joe the Biden's system, DOJ is trying to. Yeah, take the along. system isn't supposed to have sides. That's no. the whole freaking point. Right. The whole freaking point. Yeah, here Hex it is balances. actually. So, this is what she said. Uh, she said, if you're wondering why the system turned on one of its own, and she had some stupid video from a right wing account. And I said, you people are special. The system isn't supposed to have sides. This is literally how it's supposed to work. You're not very smart. I like how you start your hellos. You're special. So <laughs> let, me sit, let me sit you down. Like, you don't even realize how funny you are when you, when you start the insult. You're special. So let me sit you down. Okay. I mean, it, it's, like, it's just like Elon Musk. Elon Musk yeah. was, was out today. He's getting fact-checked on his own freaking platform. Yeah. Like, th- this is... And here's the kicker. The kicker is how many people actually like it. Right. Th- these aren't people. I'm 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 convinced of it now. Elon Musk has bots. He doesn't have followers. Like and and the people that do follow him, I just don't think that they pay attention. Like here he is. He said you can't just convert a nonprofit into a for-profit. That is illegal. And it fact check U.S. law allows nonprofits to be converted into for profits with like three awesome uh, citations of why Elon Musk is a moron. So it's like this is the guy that you guys think is a, is a, is is going to save the world. This guy's a moron. Like I just I you know he and 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 his whole account is right wing you know pushing Trump and all this stuff. And then today he's talking about. Um, uh, what was it? Uh, once you understand the uh, Kardashev scale, it becomes utterly obvious that essentially all energy generation will be solar. Also, yeah. just do the math on solar on Earth, and you soon figure out that a relatively small corner of Texas or New Mexico can easily serve all U.S. electricity. And I replied and I said, then why are you supporting the party that actively lobbies against solar and renewable energy resources? Right, right. It's like, so I, I actually agree with, with him on that. Like yeah. every house in Arizona should have free fucking solar panels and we should be pumping out electricity for the whole freaking country. Yeah. Like it's and the only reason that that isn't happening, by the way, is lobbyists and corporate greed, because right. what happens to the electric companies that make a shit ton of money off of us? What happens to them when we're all independent on solar energy? They don't make any more money off of us. Matter of fact, not only do they not make any more money off of us, but we are able to sell the electricity back to them and they have to pay us. That's right. That's what they don't want. And that's why I don't understand why people vote for Republicans, because it's like they they don't actually want you to be independent. They may say they do, but they they want you dependent on them. They want you dependent on the system. Like that, yeah. that is literally what they want. They may say something else, but they want everybody dependent on the system. They want, they want no, you dependent on that paycheck. They right. want you to, they, they want, they want that. The they minute to, that we don't, poison dude, the minute we don't pill. have to depend yeah. on a, 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 an energy grid, the minute that we can produce our own food, yes. the minute we become independent and we don't need them anymore, <clears throat> that takes away all their power. And That's Elon right. Musk is nothing. He's he's literally Donald Trump. He he sells his name. He sells ideas that he can never deliver on. Right. Like he's not Steve Jobs. Like Steve no. Jobs could actually deliver. You know, Elon Musk is a moron. Like you just look at Tesla. Like the first car that all of us fell in love with, the Roadster, that was created by the two guys that actually started Tesla. That's right. And then Musk ran those two out. And, you know, took it over, essentially, and we ended up with the Cybertruck and the Model 3. 
Yeah. Like a great, you've got, you've got something that looks like it's off of the Roblox game and a, and a driving thumb going down the road. Like, it's Ray. just so wild to think about. I mean, and even some of the, the concepts, people, they were like, well, you know, solar doesn't work on a cloudy day. And it's like, guys, God damn it. Do really? you know how battery works? Do you know how bad? And like, by the way, the battery and solar like, does still, it may not be, you may not yes. be getting 100% of the charge, but you're still, still it getting, still is putting out. There's still UV ray. You could still get sunburnt on a cloudy day. It happens, guys. So that's Come what on. I mean, dude. Like, and to me, as Science. soon as somebody says something like that, I inst- like I have a big like flag that goes up my head. It like says moron. <laughs> like, Special. <laughs> and then and then next says move on. Because you're not gonna you're not gonna there's Don't no ever argue in, with an idiot. No. There's no good faith intellectual conversation no. to be had with this person. No. So and, and that's where I need to get better at just being like, okay, you're clearly not you're not serious. No, you know, and you haven't done your research, or no, we're talking about in life, you're not serious about. Yeah, life. or you like, just don't serious. understand, you know, what it is you're reading or what's right. what's being presented to you. Which, you know, by the way, that's fine. Like, I don't understand everything or, the first time or, somebody presents it to me, but go figure it out. You think your remote control is magic? Like, you don't understand how a battery works. Like, you know, those are things that you have to understand about certain people. You technically, know? matter of fact, my my remote control is technically magic, and the reason because it has a solar screen on the back, and all I have to do is flip it on its face, and it recharges. Imagine that. That's magic. You get that witchcraft away from me, right? right? Yeah, they'd be putting me in the ground for for having something like that back in the day. Oh my god! And when I say uh, back in the day, I mean 1964. Um, <laughs> uh, real quick, special shout out to Juan. Uh, I want to say check up on you because uh, you guys in Florida are dealing with that hurricane. How are you? Oh, family? yes. yes. Uh, how's everybody in your area? If you could just write to us, let us know, man. But we think about you. Yeah, my brother's in Florida, too. But he said uh, he said that they were good there. Um, yeah, we got a couple listeners actually in Florida. So definitely thinking about you. And All actually, right. my my wife actually just texts me. Um, I, I might if Ian takes the mic for a few I might actually pull it up because uh, it sounds sounds kind of important. Uh, the dams have apparently broken in Tennessee, uh, mm. causing extreme flooding, um, and North Carolina is flooding too. So it sounds well, like thing. It sounds like a lot of people are are um, going to be displaced and dealing with this. So definitely in our thoughts and uh, you know don't want to see anybody property. lose their life over this you no, know no and if you, if you it's can, just property get the fuck out of there you can replace a house you can replace a car you can't replace that. your Be life careful because there's like literally uh uh, uh alligators swimming in florida that too, right now yeah, like well. you guys be really careful about getting out and walking around in that water or whatever that is so uh the footage is, is just wild yeah in florida i think wild. i'd go for my roof before i'd walk in that water yeah yeah <laughs> like the helicopter please come get me because uh i'm not I'm not trying to go crocodile Dundee. It's not it just can't happen. It just cannot happen. No. Um, but so so with Mayor Mayor Adams here in New York, um, you know, a lot of this is coming out with Turkey uh, for what they wanted and why this all kind of transpired. And it just it showed, you know, these foreign uh, entities that we could be bought. And I'm glad now you're that talking about really, the Turkey consulate. Correct? Turkey consulate. Well, the country, first off, wanted its consulate to be built. And then they were not getting the the building codes uh, if uh, the uh um, uh, uh, fire department, New York fire department, uh, was like, this is not going to pass. Like you're, we need to do this properly. And the thing about New York is that when you see some of the illegal builds that have been here and see what's happened and how they've been condemned and what's collapsed, you understand why they take it very serious here because it is a grid. It is hard to get around when you're deadlocked in traffic, which we could talk about, especially with the UN going on here. Um, you know, it's like, you're, you're in a situation. And uh, and so for them to pretty much spend all this money, I mean, we're talking about um, uh, allegedly one hundred and twenty uh, one hundred and twenty three thousand dollars worth of luxury travel between 2016 and 2021 alone. So and then and, and he like, didn't that's even a lot. Any of this. That's, that's a lot, lot of money. That's 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 your boy uh, 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 as a as a Supreme Court justice. Somebody actually said that. Let me see if I can find it. You know, that's that's some Clarence Thomas numbers. And that's that's flirting with, uh, you know, just some travel because yeah. he's racked up millions. But when you see the, the the dark money that's within politics and you realize that's what you're going up against. What killed me was the money that he was raising and not claiming. And then he was uh, twisting it to be like it was donations here in, in the U.S. to then be matched by constituents. And it's like, well, wait a minute. You, you can't just be playing this funneling game and then getting matches by, by something that has to do with another, another country's government. Like, this is yeah. it's so wild to me. Yeah. 
Um, and that's why, and you know, uh, like I said, um, uh, Miley, uh, uh, Maya Wiley, she, she, I thought would have been amazing. She's now a correspondent uh, in the news and she's doing her thing. And I'm just like, you know, she just sounded like a great voice of reason that we needed here in New York. Um, but this is, uh, you know, he's already pled not guilty and we'll see what, what comes out of it here in New York, but, um, it's not looking good. And keep in mind that governor, uh, Hochul can uh, remove him, uh, if, if she sees fit as the governor. So I just want to ask you just like a simple, put it simply, how, how does this make you feel as a New Yorker? Uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's New York. You know, you you see the crime. Uh, to me, uh, a cop and a criminal have the same mindset, and that's how they chase each other. You know, that's how one outsmarts the other. That's how one captures the other. Yeah, they think it's, the same. They yeah. think the same. And so I think it's a fine line that you could teeter either way. And I also think that <clears throat> we might want to review some of his past cases mm. um, and, and really think about what his resume is. I hadn't even thought um, of that. Because when you're, when you're talking about someone being this – comfortable at this level to do global right uh do this type of crime what was happening when it was on a local level and uh and who did you step over to get to where you're at today so i'm i'm thinking a little bit deeper about about adams and uh and it's sad because you want to see you want to see somebody like him achieve you're like okay look at this guy he, he he did everything right you know he became a cop and he did all these things and he was on the right side uh, uh at least the display of that was and then you're like, and then look, he made it to become the mayor of New York, one of the biggest cities in America, um, one of the most, you know, diverse cities in the world. Like, it's like, OK, this is great to see a black man doing his thing. And you're like, you're no Obama, you know, no. and it's it's one of those things where you quickly go. There's something off about you. And uh, and I can't quite put my finger on it, but it's like, well, now here's some receipts. And it's like, OK, let's see what happens in trial, because um the new york district uh southern district is no joke they're the same district that went after trump this is this place yeah. is definitely they they do the work and uh yeah so i I'm, i am you know seeing him i'm seeing things come to fruition hey thanks for the thanks for following the show uh on twitch if i might appreciate that um yeah no it's um Unfortunately, like you said, um, a lot of this, I think people kind of saw the writing on the wall of possibilities. Right. But, you know, like you said, now here are the receipts. Right. Th this actually happened. And so now we have something to actually go off of. And um, I, I just, I still appreciate the fact that I vote for the side that more times than not hold their own accountable. Like if you break the law, you you should be held accountable. It does. Yep. It shouldn't matter what political affiliation you are. Shouldn't matter what color you are. Shouldn't matter what religion you believe in. None of those things should matter. The system should be as as non biased as possible. If you break the law, it doesn't matter how much money you have. It doesn't matter what your position is in the military. None of that matters. You break right. the law, you go to jail. And by the way, anybody who's in the military will tell you. Uh, if the MPs, one of the reasons that some of them liked their job was because they got to hem up anybody. So, and anybody. this did happen. Like literally I watched this happen. Yeah. So you're coming into the gate and you get some, some high ranking member of the military, an officer, if you will, and they forget their ID and they, they try to get onto the base without their ID and start pulling the whole, well, don't you know who I am? Right. And the MPs are like, yep know exactly who you are but you still don't have your id and i'm still not letting you on the base right and it's like at that point if if the the commander or the officer continues to press the issue like th that mp is going to pull you out of your car and put you on your face right for not doing what you were told to do right a and that's the way it should be like just because you're you know you may be the commander of the base that doesn't mean that you get to break the rules that doesn't mean that you don't follow the same you know, verification process that we all have to, to come on base. Right. You know, like, so it, it's just, I wish that the Republican party could be like that. Cause if they were Donald Trump would have been gone a long time ago. It's, I mean, you, you would just think that anybody who's in running for any type of seat, it just has the morals that you can be proud of for your kids to look up to. 
you know. Yep. Like that it's 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 really hard to stomach that you're you're telling your kid not to be an asshole and then you're like, but here's my president. Yeah. You know but what I'm I mean? voting like, for the asshole. You know what I mean? So it's like it's it's really hard to give that 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 signal to your child where they know they pick up on more than we do, you know, because they're taking in everything. That's that's true. I, I think know, kids pick we up put on, on our blinders. We're like, I'm done dealing with this shit. Kids are just taking it all in. You know, and it's funny you said that because I'm learning. I'm I'm really picking up on that with with my daughter. Yeah. You know, like it, it's as much as I try to keep her innocent, you know, and everything. It's amazing to me the things that she just picks up on just from hearing, you know, the show, hearing Jen and I talk, you know, hearing me and you on the phone, just all those little things. Like it makes her I'm start. I'm so sorry. I'm make, so sorry. <laughs> no, but it, it makes her start asking questions. Because I talk that shit. I definitely talk that shit. No, she hears my side. Um, <laughs> but but no, it's just like, you know, it's she's already starting to ask questions that mm. it's like. I think as parents, maybe you're not ready for your child to be at that, that level yet. Right. And, and she already is. And so I'm having to accept that and be like, okay, so it's time for us to start having these conversations then, you know, cause you're, you're, you are inquiring, right. you know, I think it's very different to, you know, I think a lot of us from our generation, a lot of us were probably forced into religion some way, shape or form or forced to go to church or whatever. And it's very different when you choose to go right. versus when you're forced. And I think that uh, it's, it, this is very similar. So, but it, um, but it also is a testament to show how great of a father you are because you have raised her in a, in a space to be inquisitive. Yes, it is who she is. Um, but it's one of those things that really kind of is she knows that she's in a safe space where she can start to ask these questions. You know, she's not yeah. in a place where she's like, oh, I need to, you know, get in the corner and not, you know, not talk or anything like that. Like you really have given her a space where she can actually now venture and she has the gray matter. It's there, you know, you oh, and yeah. Jen are both very intelligent people. So it's like, it's there. It is there. Um, as my dad would say, you know, we don't raise no dummies, you know, we don't raise like, no dummies. yeah, you, 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 <laughs> she's genetically gifted. Yeah. You know, so it's like, uh, ain't no special on that one. All right. That's just, no, <laughs> but you know, I, all joking aside, I'm very fortunate. Both my kids are very, um, you know, they're, they're both smart, but they're both very kind and they think about other people. And that's what and, we need. And, we need more of that. And that's especially Dominic, like Dominic, you know, he's, he's in that period where he's trying to find the balance of being, being, an, you know, nice kid. You know, because he's yeah. got a, such a good heart, and and being able to be a little aggressive. Right. So, like, you know, just on the soccer field last night, you know, he was getting they, when they were scrimmaging, he was getting pushed around a little bit, and he's not really used to that. You know, this is his first time playing soccer. Yeah. And so when we were driving home, he was kind of telling me how he didn't like it, and I was like, okay. I go, that's okay. I said, but you need to get out there and be a little aggressive too. You know, like go after the ball. You know, it's okay to bump. You know, bump a little bit and and what. So it's just or you know, or. Learn how to flop like the best of them and get that card, baby. No, I ain't teaching myself how to flop. Hey, no. hey, it's, it's, it is chess. It is 4D chess to do that flop well, on the game, baby. When right now, I'm just bag, trying to get I'm just trying to get him to figure out to kick the ball with the inside of his foot hey, and not man, his just, toe. Just so. make sure they know how to win the game. Get that flag. I'm just saying. Yeah. Won a couple, won a couple of games with that flag. Yeah. No. I'm, so I'm looking Penalty forward. Kick. I'm looking Penalty forward to, to tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> So, oh, real quick, I hope hopefully he doesn't watch the podcast. Um, so I have a co-coach, and um, no, thank God for this guy because he's been he's been an amazing help. But our second practice, he's like we're all trying to clean up, and the kids are still kind of playing around. Mm -hmm. And he was standing in front of the goal, and one of the kids was like, and the kid wasn't even that far away. I'm talking like maybe maybe ten feet. And he, the kid just wows up and, and kicks the ball into the goal. And it it just hits the dude right in the nuts. Like, crippling down to the ground. Like, I saw it happen. And I was like, oh. Co coach was down. Like, dude, like, my stomach started hurting. Like, it was that bad. And I just, I text him. I text him the next morning. And I was like, hey, bro, you know, just checking on you. Make sure you're all right. No and icing? Like, he, he said, I definitely needed the night. <laughs> I was like, you're coming back, right? You're still going to coach, still, right? Still down? Still down. Oh, oh man. God. Yeah, it was, it was it brutal, is, but 
It is um, everything. And the worst part was the kid just was like, oh, sorry, picked up the ball and went running to go keep playing. Like, <laughs> like you just took, you just like ended that dude's baby making factory and yeah. game over. Game, game over. over. These kids don't know though yet. They, you know, they need to yeah, drop. Yeah, he don't first, know yet. Or he, he knows know real yet. struggle. That's how, that's. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. So yeah, speaking of here. struggles, um, New York is a bit gridlocked right now. Yeah, man. So this is so for those y'all who don't know, uh, I live here in New York and uh, I work in the city and uh, I live in Brooklyn. And and uh, when the U.N. is here, it's the worst time. It is just the worst time because you have world leaders, presidents from other countries posted up. And with that comes a lot of Secret Service. There's a lot of one way streets that get blocked up. And, you know, your brother said that uh, I need to have a show called uh, talk, I, I Talk That Shit. We're going to have a segment. Ian talks that shit. That's what I it like is. That. This is. This is the segment. Ian talks that shit. I'm going to talk some shit about New York. So this this grid, when we tell you that it, it I work maybe three or four miles away from uh, where I live, it takes me literally about an hour and a half to get there during the U.N. That's not far. It's really not that far, but it, it is it is painstakingly. Uh, a journey to get to where you got to go. And uh, and the, the worst thing is I try to outsmart it and get a little earlier. Because I'm like, ain't no president going nowhere at 6 in the morning, 7 in the morning. Like, they're leaving roughly around the 9, 10-ish, right? Yeah. And uh, and I'm I'm around. I'm not going to name which president. Uh, I don't need none of y'all to know my locations. But uh, but yeah. definitely uh, uh, just just know it was a president and, uh, and um, a foreign country. And so the Secret Service and I always – always get into it every year and it's because they step onto the property that I'm, I'm around and I'm like, Hey guys, can you guys just give us a little bit of space? Like just don't be in our space, whatever the case is, just stay in your little section and protect whoever you need to protect. <laughs> and, uh, and so this year I was walking, I was walking back to, to my office and, uh, and security jumped me. Like they like put their hands up. Hey, Hey, you can't come over here. I was like, my man, first off, hands off me. Second off, all right, I go, you guys do this shit every – and this is how we talk. This is how we talk to Secret Service. I go, we do this shit every year. I understand you have a job to do. I, too, have a job, and I'm trying to get to my job that is right there. I go, so let's wrap this up. I go, president's not coming out yet. I already know everybody that works there. I know everyone there. Let's just wrap this up. Like, go ahead, talk to your commander, but you're holding me up now. And he goes, but you understand. I go, I get it. I get it. But you got a little microphone. Call your boss and be like, can this dude pass? Because I'm trying to wrap this up right now. And he's like, you're just you're just really just outspoken. And I'm like, every year, every year we do this. This is not a tourist just sitting here. Oh, my God. Who am I going to see behind that door? You're like, like, no, you were holding me up. I got shit to do. And uh, and so it's it's just wild uh, how so many people have stories. Everybody about how they're stuck in traffic, read uh, uh, delayed cop cars crashing into other cars and you're like what is going on like why why is it that people just don't know how to act during this time frame but it's a grid it's a new new york to me is such a small town it's such a small grid and it's like um you know like i said i know some of these ambassadors i i see these people every day and it's just you know we just keep we're pleasant i'm walking a dog i'm hanging out and hey how you guys doing? you know eno's with me oh is that eno you know it's just these are the things that exist right in my life and i always laugh i go these are these are my problems these are my problems so Spe- speaking of grids has has anybody <laughs> checked to see if grinders freezing up right now oh, oh in new york <laughs> please please this isn't a republican <laughs> convention this is this is the un all right this is this is what we're doing. Tell them, bro. You know, Tell them, bro. if this was a Republican convention, yes, there would be a shutdown. There'd be drag queens galore. You know what I mean? Like, let's be serious. No, this is the UN. They, I'm they're so looking glad more, you said that. They're looking for more mail order brides. You know what I mean? To call in. That's this is a different situation. Different clientele. Uh, so, um, but for those who may not have had the time to tune into the UN like us weirdos, uh, I. I think it's safe to say that Biden stole the show. Man, Biden, Biden, he's a quiet giant, man. He's right? not loud. He's not, he's not screaming for your attention, but his words are, are piercing. Yeah. Yes. And, and speaking of some of his words, uh, he said, we must never forget uh, who we're here to represent. We, the people, these are the first words of our constitution, the very idea of America. And they inspired the opening words of our UN charter. I've made the preservation 
of democracy the central cause of my presidency. This summer, I faced a decision whether to seek a second term as president. It was a difficult decision. Being president has been the honor of my life. There's so much more I want to get done. But as much as I love the job, I love my country more. I decided after 50 years of public service, it's time for a new generation of leadership to take my nation forward. My fellow leaders, let us never forget. Some things are more important than staying in power. That's that's bold, man. Uh, it's Say how, that last line again. Say that last line again. Uh, uh, my fellow leaders, let us never forget. Some things are more important than staying in power. That right there, I think, stole the show. Yeah, you know, I, um, that's and truth I, to power right there. And I, I like. Um, it's almost like he's getting his his goodbye, you know, right now. Oh, my man's doing the goodbye tour right now. And, and it's good, you know, but I like the message that he's putting out as he's doing it. Yeah. You know, and I love the fact that, you know, Kamala and Tim Walls have both made uh, appreciating Joe Biden and getting us here part of their campaigning. Um, I think that that is going to ultimately help us move forward uh, and, and, you know, move on from from this presidency. Um, But uh, next to that, the other really, I'll say, interesting thing that happened was when um, Israel Prime Minister uh, Netanyahu Netanyahu. uh, got up to speak. Uh, There were some people that weren't really having that. And here's the video of them walking I out. I request protocol to escort His Excellency and invite him to address the assembly. So, I mean... Man, this looks like a Trump rally. People just walking out. <laughs> <laughs> just out. Bye. Order, please. I mean, that's... Ladies and that's more than a few. Order. That's more than a few. And if you look around, it looked like half of them didn't show up to listen to begin with. And here's the thing: this is this is like Order, these are please. world leaders. People can't like this is this is not just some random strangers. These are people who are, are very important from their countries. Yep. I mean, man, that was a lot of people that got up and left. That, 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 I request tough crowd. To <laughs> very <laughs> tough crowd. <laughs> but okay, but let me ask you: Do you think that? <clears throat> do you think it will the it's rightfully so that the crowd be that uh upset? I mean, I think I think a protest is a protest is a protest. And I think that if you're going to use your platform in that moment where you have the world's eyes on you and this this right here I think is this is this is not anti Semitic. This is no. we do not stand by anything you have to say. We do not want to hear from you. What we want is a conversation about a ceasefire. And if you don't have anything to offer us that is that, we are out. Yep. Because everything you have done thus far has been about you prolonging this war. And yes. there's a part of that where it's like, that's not anti Semitic to say. But no. when you're it's following fact, a Jewish factual. kid into a store and you're harassing him, that's not doing anything to, but being anti Semitic. And it's like, we all need to understand where those lines are drawn, you know? So, so doing this to the man that, that I have talked mad shit about Bibby, Bibby is an asshole. Two things can be true. Some of the worst people are leading this and neither side wants a ceasefire, but it's, it's, it's insane to me that we protest only one side of this. When you have someone like Hezbollah, who's been firing 8,000 rockets since October 8th, before even Israel responded to October 7th. Yeah. So it's like, you know, it's it's hard to have these kind of dialogue. And, you know, and, and yes, we, we we touched on this topic last week, even though there's, you know, a, a back and forth between Robbie and I. And it, it shows you even within a family, we don't agree on certain things, but it's like there's a certain element there where I can't just scream ceasefire, but not ask for the hostages. You know, and I don't yeah. and, and I know Rob didn't didn't say that it wasn't that wasn't our arguments. No, but, but it's I those think things the we talk about it on this show a lot, which I'm, I'm kind of glad we do. We talk about the, the gray area mm-hmm. and and how this war and and everything that's happening is not black and white. You know, right. um, it's not it's very hard for me to come out and support Israel with Netanyahu behind the wheel. Right. Like you, like you said, just because knowing that he's not really interested 
in, in a ceasefire. Right. And then on the flip side, knowing that, you know, can you ever really trust a terrorist organization to, to follow through with their word? Right. You know, most rational people would say no. So, um, you know, it's not black and white. It's not simple. Um, and I hope most people can see now that, you know, we can all argue over should we or shouldn't we be sending weapons and money and, you know, this, that, and the other. But I think we can, I hope most of us can agree that Joe Biden didn't, is not causing this. Joe Biden is not the one stopping the, the ceasefire. You know, uh, it's, it, this is much bigger than just us. Right. And uh, I hope people remember that when we, we go into the voting booth uh, November 5th. And it's and it really is interesting to see people who are are trying to politicize that and be like, Trump's going to, you know, do uh, he's going to stop this. And I'm like, Trump's not Trump's not looking for any type of world peace. He's looking at what benefits him first and foremost. That's where he operates. And peace does not benefit him. No, no. And it's he's going to find whatever is necessary between that, his friendship with Putin, you know, and and his friendship with with uh, Bibi. He he wants to make certain things happen. And I wouldn't be surprised if this asshole tries to build a golf course in Gaza. Like, let's be serious, yeah. guys. That's who this man is. You know, he, yep. he is he's a special one. Well, and I want to expand on that a little bit, too. The, the reason that um, Trump... Ah, oh, fuck, I lost it. I lost what I was going to say. Sorry. Well, it's, it's, it's interesting to see... The UN in general, when you see the people come together and what their world message is, yeah. the the Colombian president has a beef with the one percent talking about climate change and what their effects are doing. And I'm very thankful because he's an environmentalist and he's he's an indigenous in, individual uh, to Colombia, and he um, he's bringing this world peace uh, uh, type of mojo to the table yeah. regarding the fact that it's like it's not about the everyday people and recycling; mm. it's the world. Uh, the world traveling, the the Elon Musk, the the Bezos, uh, even the Taylor Swifts, who are literally uh, uh, creating a majority of the pollution by their boats, their 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 private flights, the, their lifestyle, their their carbon footprint. Like he's actually bringing the fight to them, and that's what's so interesting to see from a world leader, you know. And yeah. it's like, thank you, thank you for actually like bringing that message to the table. And the reason that Donald Trump. Uh, wants war and doesn't want ceasefire is because he he rules off of chaos. Mm -hmm. And if there's peace, what do you what what do you look at in your leader when in times of peace? You look for what are you doing for us? What are you doing for the American people? What are you doing for the country? What are you doing for our infrastructure? What what policies do you have? What ideas do you have? You know, and the minute you start asking Trump those kind of questions, he freezes and doesn't know what to do. And he has to move the goalpost or change the subject or blame somebody else or do whatever. But the one thing that you will never hear from Donald Trump is a fucking idea. Mm -hmm. So, um, like I said, I think at this point, if you're voting for Donald Trump, like it's literally like holding a sign saying, I support a rapist. I support domestic terrorism. I support an accused pedophile. I like he's a felon. Like what, what, what about this man do you think makes him a good leader? More importantly, what do you think about that Donald Trump brings to the table that, that Kamala Harris doesn't like what, what makes Donald Trump more qualified to be president of the United States than somebody like Kamala Harris? I will give you, he has a great imagination. Yeah. Well, the bullshit I'm, he comes up with. Well, go work, go work for fucking Disney then. You don't need to be. You don't need oh, to be oh, in the White House. Oh, Disney's past their racist era. Okay, this is this is not that Disney anymore. <laughs> um, this is not that. But you know what? He has an imagination that is like no other. And, it is, and and, uh, and you I, have to live in a magical world because of all the failures that this man has had, all those L's that he has taken, and yet he is still and, here. And I think I'll, I think I'll end it on this. I think anybody in America should question somebody running for president who is simultaneously starting a crypto coin, selling $100,000 watches, selling NFTs, selling gold sneakers, 
and the whole time talking about deregulating markets. So this dude literally wants to deregulate markets so him and Elon Musk and everybody else can make more money off of us and get zero accountability when things go south. Like, that's literally why people support Trump. Right. So, and that's not even talking about the rape, the, him being an accused pedophile. Like, we're, that's not even talking about all the personal shit. That's just talking about what he's doing. He is a grifter. I, I seriously don't even think this dude wants to be president. I think he wants the money, and I think he wants the power to try to keep himself out of prison. He doesn't want to visit, did he? That's, he the, want only the, re- that's the only doesn't reason the this diddler. dude is running, is because he knows that if he <laughs> you wins, know how much baby he can, oil he needs? He can Thanos this shit away. <laughs> well, actually, Georgia, he can't. Well, that's you know, state. just remember, Diddy's not going to prison. Prison's coming to Diddy, okay? Hey, man. And um, that's why... <laughs> that's why this Agent Orange is not trying to go there, all right? Because he has no power against that oil. You know, I, I and I, I, I hope it doesn't happen, but it would not surprise me if, if uh, Diddy ends up the same place Epstein did. Oh, that goes without saying. One of two reasons, either because he's too much of a, a, a pussy to do his time, or there are people that really don't want him to talk. Whichever one it ends up being. He has tapes, and if he was not a smart man, he would not have those as a backup somewhere to be released upon. I'm telling head. you, I got thumb drives. I got, I got, you remember those old CDs? I burned old CDs of you bitches. You know what I mean? you know what I mean? <laughs> They're in a vanilla envelope in a, in a, in a bank somewhere waiting for you to mess me up. That's right. That's right. If he does not have that, then, then that's, a, that's a done ditty. That's a done so, ditty. <laughs> done deal ditty. Oh, done ditty. <laughs> done deal <laughs> ditty. <laughs> Oh, God. And with that, let's move on to our positives for the week. What's Besides us week? not being Diddy and not needing cases of baby oil. No Diddy. No Diddy. No baby oil. Oh, my God. <laughs> it reminds oh. me, I was, what was, I was watching a, a documentary on Andre the Giant. Ooh. And it was talking about how he hated um, uh, Macho Man Randy Savage because he was always covered in baby oil. And they were talking about, he, so uh, Randy Savage would come in and start trying to talk to him about the match, and he'd yell at him and say, no baby oil, and tell him to get out. <laughs> and then he'd punish him in the ring. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, I, you know, I, uh, Andre, I was just wondering, you know, uh, <laughs> get out. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta love these guys. Oh, man. Uh, what's your um, positive? My positive is uh, that I have that I have good health care. Um, so uh, luckily, I went in today and I didn't. I thought I was having surgery on my shoulder. Um, so if you if you watch the show, then I've already talked about it. But for those of you who haven't heard the episodes, um, I had a couple of uh, like I don't want to call them cancerous. They were abnormal things that came back, uh, like moles that they had taken off at the dermatologist. So uh, one came back like you know, pretty close to cancerous. It was that abnormal. So they want to go out and cut more. Um, so I thought I was having that done today, but it turns out that I was actually going in to have a check and we found another one on my arm that uh, didn't look real good. So we went ahead and took that one off. So I just, you know, I've had two back surgeries. I've had my colon taken out. I have Lynch syndrome. Like I'm just so thankful that I, I have insurance and good insurance that, yeah. you know, because I, I can without a doubt say that if I didn't have the insurance I have, that it would probably have bankrupted my family by now. So I'm very thankful for that. And it's also one of the reasons that I do what I do, because I know that if I didn't have what I have, that I wouldn't we wouldn't be OK as a family. Yeah. And I know that for every one of us there's three families that don't have that kind of health care and don't know what they're going to do if their kid gets sick or if they get sick and they have to miss work or whatever. And um, so that's one of the reasons that I come out here and I fight the way that I do, because every American should have at least the basic health amount of health care to save your freaking life. And one of the things that saves lives are checkups. Go, you know, the ability to go in and get your skin looked at, the ability to go in and get genetic testing to see if there's something that maybe your family carries. Like for me, it's colon cancer. Yeah. Um, you know, just all of those things. Like I said, if I if I hadn't found out when I was 25 that I had Lynch syndrome, I wouldn't have known to get colonoscopies every year, and I wouldn't have found those those 
really bad polyps when I was 37 and I wouldn't have gotten my colon taken out. Like I wouldn't be here today. Yeah. And so just days like today, you know, and, and by the way, my dermatologist is awesome. Shout out to Dyson dermatology in Tucson. They're freaking amazing. Um, it just going through it today and getting to talk with, with the dermatologist just really reminded me of just why we, we come out here and we fight these battles and we try to get this legislation passed so that, um, you know, everybody can have basic health care, basic life-saving checkups. Yeah. And at the end of the day, you know, if you want to look at it from a bean counter monetary, you know, position, you know, it actually saves, it, it will actually save insurance companies money right. to pay for a basic health screening than it would to wait for somebody to get cancer. Like it would actually cost them more money. So preventative, it's like preventative maintenance on a car. If you, if you constantly get your oil changed and all that stuff, your engine's probably not going to blow for a really long That's time. Right. That's right. But if you don't check the oil and you let it run low and all those things, you're going to blow your engine. And it's going to happen. You know, it may happen at 30,000, 40,000 miles. You know, our gotta bodies think, collect these miles, man. You got to think your body, like I got a lot of right. miles on these tires, but you really do have to think your body the same way. You know, yeah. like you, you have to get those checkups and you have to take care of the little things before they become big things. Yeah. So that was my positive. I, I just, um, just very thankful for, for the medical team that I have here in Tucson. Uh, you know, I, I think most 42 year olds probably don't have as many doctors as I have, but, um, no, man, I think it's a beautiful thing that you have this great setup, but at the same time too, just, just your, your clarity and the, the, uh, what you say to the show, because you are, you're encouraging a lot of young men who, who may not be thinking about this, you know? Especially and I really, I really appreciate families, you yeah. it. Yeah. And it's, and, you know, and just putting it out there, just documenting it and, uh, and, and that you're staying ahead of it. You know, I think it's a really great message that you bring, uh, on this subject matter because it, it's true. There's, there's nothing masculine about not getting a checkup. Like no. go get checked out, man. Just know, know, know your stats. Know what's especially, going on. you know, like I know I get it. You don't, know, especially as a, us men, especially from our generation and, and older, you know, you see, so you just get some really stupid stuff put in your head, dumb masculine stuff. And it's like, oh, I don't want to let a doctor put his finger up my butt. I don't want to put a camera up my ass. Well, I got news for you. That finger up your ass, or that camera up your ass might save your life. Or so, it might be at a ditty party. Who knows? At a ditty party, that's a little different. That might not be life saving. <laughs> take that, take that. Yeah, we take that. You might, you might be taking that for the wrong reason, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but if it's a doctor, <laughs> you know, Doctor Diddley, what? <laughs> You're just not going to let that go, are you? Dr. Doolittle, Dr. Diddley. There it is. It's all what's there. Your, so what's your positive for the week? My, my positive, and I should stop right now. Um, <laughs> my, mine's a little. <laughs> I have a problem, guys. This is this is my therapy session. Uh, yeah. um, no, my positive is is a little bit more darker, um, but but there is light at the end of the tunnel. Oh, so it's one and of my is, one of my positives. What are your, what are your normal <laughs> positives, right? Right. Watch the world burn, but you know what? We're still here. But, that's, but that's we're still positive. here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're still here. That's the positive in it. Just don't look um, up. Yes, don't look up. Um, one of one of the saddest things I can say is uh, uh, a dear friend of Rob and I, uh, mostly Rob's, um, passed away, and he was your age, and uh, just happened this Monday of uh, a brain aneurysm, and uh, and I have lost now three friends to uh, brain aneurysms. And I want to encourage anybody who may think or, or may have it running in your family and, and uh, genetically to get checked out, get a MRI, just, just again, knowing your stats. Yep. Um, the, the, the thing about this, and his name is Diego. Diego was this amazing human being that really lit up a room. And uh, I met Diego, uh, he worked with Rob at a bar and I would DJ at this bar when I first moved here. And Diego and I really got along, we really clicked. And uh, so these are, you know, much like you, like, you know, friends of Rob's. And then we just I became little brother. And then I would just like hang out with everybody. Diego was a partier. He was he was the life of a party um, and, and just a, just would light up a room and uh, amazing human being. And uh, and it's really tragic to for this news to come out. And um, the, the positive of it is seeing this wave of social media of people reconnecting and posting and, and cherishing this man's life and, and them sharing their stories about their experiences with him. And I want to share one with you uh, that, that is one of my favorite. And it was when I worked with Beyonce 
and uh, and it was here in New York at Barclays Center. Barclays was brand new. Uh, I got to work with the VIP section of getting all the people in and out. And uh, guys who don't know me, uh, I've worked in the entertainment industry and I've done all these different things. And I've been like jack of all trades. And at this one section of my life, I was doing concerts. And uh, and I did this concert. And, and the reason why I did this concert was to... The one thing I wanted was to get tickets so I could thank Rob for uh, for helping me get me, uh, a, a.k.a. move me into New York uh, give me my first, uh, apartment. And, uh, and then I said, you know, bring a friend and then I'll bring, you know, uh, at the time my girlfriend, but wife now. And so, um, and good night, Rochelle. I uh, love you too. Um, and so, uh, one of the big things is, uh, uh, he brought Diego and I asked for Diego cause I love Diego's energy. I said, who would be a great friend to have at this event? And so here I, I have Diego, Rob, and, and my wife, sitting in the beehive uh for this concert this is the miss carter tour and it was amazing to see these these boys light up like to see them and this was one of those like pinnacle moments of like i've i've done really well in new york and and here i get to share it with my closest circle and it was the moment and i have this uh this this polaroid that was taken uh from that night and it's it lives on my fridge and it lives on rob's fridge and it was one of those things where i was like man it just took me back to how special that night was. And it was re just reliving it just this week. And I've been looking at his picture and I was like, just an amazing soul. And I always think about how the good die young. And it's one of those things where, you know, we all have our own troubles, our tri uh, uh, tribulations, you know, we walk our paths and, uh, but you know, there's certain, and we have our demons, but there's, there's something about us as individuals that we bring the most out of other people. And Diego was that soul. And so my positive is, 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 uh, you know, rest in peace, King to Diego, uh, sending a lot of love to you and your family. Um, you know, and, and definitely all the love, loved ones, the friends, uh, you, you were a special, special human being. And, uh, I'll think about you, uh, to the day I die. So that's my positive giving love to, uh, to Diego. Yeah, man. Sorry for you guys loss. It's, you know, it, I've lost a lot of people in my life and my, my wife and I talk about this a lot. I've been losing people since I was a teenager. And yeah. uh, and it's just one of those things where I just feel like it's another etch on the board where I'm like, wow, like I, I didn't think that one was going to go anytime soon. So but it's it's you know, it's life. And this is the thing why we why we have to fight the fight that we do. And, yeah. um, you know, not a lot of people know this, but this is actually why my nose is pierced. Uh, it's a constant reminder to live life to the fullest. Um, that was a, a special one that died that I was like, I got to have a constant reminder always around me. So I pierced my nose for that one. But it's it's one of those things, man. It's a it's a you got to keep on moving. You got to keep their their spirit alive, and uh, and that's the biggest yeah. thing. But I this know, is why we do uh, the checkups. We do everything we got to do. Yeah, like those miles. I know, man. It's uh, we. I, I think back to just my my graduating class and how many people we've lost already. You know, from yeah. from people we graduated with. And like you said, it's, you know, even if we hadn't talked in 20 years, you know, you still knew that person, you know, you knew right. their personality a little bit, you know, it's just, it's, you know, sometimes you have, uh, you know, when big celebrities pass away, you know, it hits you hard because, you know, either you, their, mu their music brings memories or their movies bring you memories or whatever. Absolutely. So it just, they feel like they're part of your life. So of course, you know, when somebody you went to school with, somebody you actually knew, you know, that was like somehow a part of your life, you know, when you lose them, it just, it definitely hits hard, you know, and, and whenever, you know, we lose somebody from the, our class, it's like, it's just, like you said, it's that reminder of it could be any day, it could be life any short, day. So you better really, you know, make the most of it, you know, yep. don't, don't let it pass you by, but yep. So things. So not trying to be a Debbie Downer, but it's one of those things where, you yeah, know, we might need to work out. We might need to work on our positives a little bit. <laughs> And that's our show. Bye. And, no, and with, with that said, make sure you like, subscribe. Of course, hold the button. mic. Yep, hold the mic is available for download on all your favorite uh, podcast streaming platforms: iHeartRadio, Apple, uh, Spotify, all of them. So you can download us, take us with you anywhere. Make sure you tell your friends about us. Make sure you hit that subscribe button if you're on YouTube. We're on Kick. We're on Twitch. We're everywhere. So make sure you 
make sure you come follow us uh, make sure you go check out ian's music just type in ian sherman on spotify and it'll pull up all of his music and you can go uh download and listen stream some of those for him and um you know that might put a few bucks in his pocket so that yeah they would don't be pay nice. but you know what enjoy the music but enjoy the music anyway <laughs> I know, dude. Like, so just real quick. So I have that screenshot I put on uh, uh, Instagram. It's got 16,000 likes. It's been yeah. viewed like almost a million times. Yeah. And it's got your song on it. So I was like, if you're getting paid for streams on that on that song from Instagram. And you go to the show. That <laughs> No. No, but that one post I did should have put should have put some money in your pocket. That was on Twitter, right? No, on Instagram. On Instagram. I have to I have to follow up with you on uh, on Instagram. We'll ah, talk okay. about it. Yeah, we'll talk we'll talk about it's, that. It's interesting. <laughs> I'll tell you I'll tell you what I'm working on right now. But yeah, okay. it's, it's interesting to see what's uh, what's coming out of that. But and um, um, we were we were supposed to record a show today with um, with an awesome the lovely wo- Sarah. With, yep, with uh, Sarah and um, they were with our Vote Repro uh, organization. So we weren't able to do that because she is in one of the areas affected by the hurricane, so yeah. she didn't have power or anything. So we just we rescheduled that. Um, Shout out but, to her. I hope you're staying safe. Yeah, and we definitely look forward to to doing that show. With that said, a big shout out to our sponsor, uh, Justice AI and Christian Ortiz, uh, for for supporting us and sponsoring the show. We greatly appreciate you. And um, with and that, good luck tomorrow for your game, man. Good luck. Yes, thank you, thank you. I'm sure the kids are going to have a good time. Um, yeah, I'll definitely I'll do a video letting you know how it goes with all the heat. <laughs> it's going to be like 107, but we're, we're going to yes, make sir. it. Yes, sir. Uh, but yeah, with that said, thank you all for your support. Um, we we see you from everywhere, all over the world, all the cities that you're downloading in. We we get to see it through the analytics. So we see you all. Thank you so much for supporting us all over the world. It, it is an honor. With that, much love. Keep fighting. Stay safe out there. And whatever you do, make sure you get your butt out and vote.